In this video, we'll focus on calculating the effect of price controls. Um, in this video in particular, I'll focus on the first type of price controls, which are price ceilings. Uh, now remember, this is in the high-level only component of um, IB economics. Imagine a situation where you have uh, a demand curve that is represented with QD equals 40 minus 5P and a supply curve that is represented with QS equals 20 plus 5P. Now where these two curves intersect, the equilibrium point occurs here with an equilibrium price of $2 and an equilibrium quantity of $30. So this is the equilibrium price and the equilibrium quantity. Now imagine the government decided to impose a price ceiling, a maximum price of $1. For whatever reason, maybe that the government thinks that this product is a necessity and it wants it to be more affordable. So, you substitute this price ceiling, this $1 into the demand function. So, QD at the price ceiling equals 40 minus 5 times 1, which is 35 units. And QS at the price ceiling, you substitute that price ceiling into the supply function. QS uh, equals 20 plus 5 times 1 equals 25 units. You can see that the quantity demanded is greater than the quantity supplied. So to calculate the shortage, we know that price ceilings result in excess um, demand or they result in a shortage. To calculate the shortage, just subtract the quantity supplied from the quantity demanded. So 35 minus 25 equals 10. And this is how to calculate the shortage at this maximum price. Now, in the diagram, if you were to label the shortage or the excess demand, it is this difference here between the quantity demanded at the maximum price and the quantity supplied at this price ceiling. This, uh, this will give you the excess demand or the shortage at this price ceiling. Now, if you were asked to compare the consumer expenditure before the price ceiling and the consumer expenditure after the price ceiling, basically consumer expenditure is the same as the producer revenue. So at equilibrium, it will equal price times quantity. So $2, which is the equilibrium price, times 30 units is $60. So $60, that's the consumer expenditure and the producer revenue if the market was left. Um, freely without any government intervention and it reaches equilibrium. It is represented by this uh, red shaded rectangle right here. Now the consumer expenditure or the producer revenue at the price ceiling, basically what you do is you take that maximum price, which is one dollar in this case, and you multiply it by the quantity that will actually be sold, so the quantity supplied, which here is 25 units. So $1 times 25 units gives you a consumer expenditure or a producer revenue of $25. And it is represented by this rectangle here that is shaded in brown. You can see that there has been a decrease in consumer expenditure and producer revenue at this price ceiling. To calculate the difference, we know that before the price ceiling, the consumer expenditure is $60. After the price ceiling, it's $25. So just to calculate the change, um, just do 60 minus 25, which will give you $35. And this is the change in consumer expenditure or the change in producer revenue as a result of this maximum price or this price ceiling. And remember, it's important to mention whether it's a, it is a drop in consumer expenditure or a rise and in this case there is a drop in consumer expenditure of $35 this is the change in consumer expenditure you can also say there is a drop in producer revenue of $35